Hey guys, what's up, Dicker? Old School Duelist 12 from Call Me. And guys, just let me complain. Now, I have one piece of news uh, that's really, really important. I'm pretty sure a lot of people already have talked about it. Um, but I, you know, I, I want to put my two cents in and then something I want to talk about because this is just let me complain. And if there's a topic that I want to complain about, uh, then I'm going to talk about it. Uh, and I feel like this is a topic that I really want to talk about. Now, this topic that I'm, the news I'm going to talk about that is about today, um, is about the YGO Pro and dueling network takedowns. Now they were they were taken down by a C and D, which is a cease and desist. Uh, I don't know much about the uh, the dueling or the YGO Pro uh, cease and desist, but I know I found an article that is talking exactly about the dueling network. I can only assume YGO Pro was taken down by the same the same cease and desist reasoning, uh, not maybe the same company and everything else. But I will read you exactly what it says and definitely I will post a comment or I post a link to it in the description below because I just you know just in case you want to read it for yourself if I miss something go ahead and post in the comments below about it um, uh, or if you want to read anything of the comments or anything like that a law firm claiming to be acting on behalf of Nihon Ad Systems NAS an animation production and licensing company that currently manages many of the rights of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series has filed a cease and desist order to the popular third-party online dual simulator. According to head administrators from Dueling Network, the website was ordered to, be, to remove all imagery relating to Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game and animated series. Currently, there are no evidence to imply any involvement on behalf of Konami, in addition, based on the information we currently know, the C and D order is limited to D uh, to dueling network DN, um, which will not affect wiki or the week the wikia hosted Yu-Gi-Oh wiki or our own site YG or YG org, um, which are legal entities independent from dueling network and should be protected by are under the rules of fair use. Keep it updated for it and it's anything like that. So what this means is the fact that uh, what Yukio or Dueling Network and more than likely YGO Pro, uh, they are ordered to take down their websites. Well, not take down their websites, but take down anything Yu-Gi-Oh related. Um, yeah, so they can't post uh, links to downloads or anything like that that has to do with uh, YGO Pro or Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, the animated series. Anything that the card game, basically. Anything Yu-Gi-Oh! affiliated. Um, does this suck? Yes, it sucks really hard. There's still Def Pro, which sucks that, you know, maybe they might hit Def Pro next. If they do, I mean, I really don't know what to say. Um, that means we just don't have uh, YGO Pro. You can still, I will let you guys, I will tell you this. You can, st If you still have the previous download program, it still works. You can still... I know for sure play offline. I haven't tried online yet just because I've been, my life has been so busy with other things, with my life and everything else. That was my phone. With my life and everything else, uh, that person that I do, um, yeah, it's just been so busy. I have really have not had time to actually delve into this situation or anything else. Uh, I mean, I still have played Yu-Gi-Oh! And, you know, I still play with my friends and the team and stuff. So I've still been doing that. I still kept up with, you know, uh, cards that have been coming out, stuff like that. But I just haven't had the time to really delve into news all that much. That's why this is the only news topic that I have today. Um, so, yeah, that's really about it. I mean, like I said, yes, they're taken down. Um, who knows, they might go back up because they might be going to court or something like this. Who knows? But all I can really say is uh, download Dev Pro. That's all, that's all I can really say about it. Please don't go attacking Konami or blaming Konami because there's no evidence or proof that shows that Konami is affiliated with this. Um, or that Konami has you know told the company, you know, go fill out a C&D and everything else like that. So... Like I said, don't go attacking Konami. It's showing that it's not their fault. If it shows that it's their fault, 
wow, wow, Konami, let's not give people um, access to your game. That would really suck. But like I said, I'm not going. I'm not blaming. I'm not attacking Konami. I'm just telling you guys, don't do it because it's showing it's not their fault. Um, and now the next thing that I want to talk about is a small topic that, or that is definitely going to take up a lot of the of the of the episode. Um, I recently uh, got a comment from Mr. J. Cisneros, uh, and which definitely has sparked an interest in a topic that I want to talk about. Uh, his comment was, with the next two packs upcoming uh, out of this year and the Blue Eyes deck that just got new support in the, all, in the new structure deck, do you think in any form of Odd Eyes, Draco Pals, or Magic Spectres will be worth playing? Or should I just stay with my PK Fire that I, f it says that I fell, that I feel will get hit badly on the next ban list? Please reply. Now, what I want to say about this, which definitely has me, like, when I read the comment, I was at work, so I really couldn't comment right away. So I had to wait a few hours, and then I commented and everything else. But anyways, if you want to see the deck profile, because he commented on the deck profile, we had a small conversation about it. Um, if you want to go read it, I will definitely post a link to the video in the description below. So go ahead and check out. It's a really good deck profile. It's a deck. It's my Magic Spectres. Or not Magic Spectres. <laughs> my perform my what I call Odd Eyes, Mag uh, Odd Eyes Performer Magicians. Um... I really, 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 really love the deck so much because it, Odd, the Odd Eyes Magician, like, Odd Eyes itself, when he first came out, in, like, intrigued me so much because it was the first, like, first wave of P Pendulum Monsters. With Pendulum Monsters, at first, I'm not even lying, I hated them. I hated them so much. And then Odd Eyes came out, and I was like, hmm, maybe Odd Eyes, because Odd Eyes is a big search card for basic, for any low attack. It's kind of like, uh, what is it? Like those uh, mo monsters back in the day, that would be like if this card was destroyed by battle or anything like that, you can special summon a pen or a monster like with the attribute, uh, fifteen hundred attack or less. It's kind of like that. Only instead of summoning, it adds it to your hand, so you can put it in the pendulum zone. Now I feel like that's what they were going with with Odd Eyes, but th with this, uh, with that Odd Eyes being released, I was like, hmm. And then I watched a little bit of Arc V, and like the magicians were a big thing, and I was like, oh my god. And then Performer Pals were a big thing. I was like, oh my god. And then Cleaforts came out. That was the the first like actual playable uh, that was actually good um, Ada, or a Pendulum deck. Now that's not about. I'm not talking about Cleaf today. What I'm talking about is is mainly Performer Pal Odd Eyes. Uh, and the Dracos and Magic Spectres because that's what he asked about, and I'm going to mention what I said about PK Fire. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm sure to talk about PK Fire real quick. Yes, I think PK Fire will be hit at the ban list. I definitely think that PK Fire will be hit at the ban list. I think Cosmos P PK Fire uh, and more than likely Monarchs will be hit on the next ban list, uh, which sucks because like I just recently started playing Monarchs, but still. And so I think the ma the big decks that will be hit uh, at the ban list. Will Performer Pal or Odd Eyes or anything like that get hit uh, on the ban list? I don't know. I really can't say because they're not really... I can't I can't say they're not relevant because there are still people that are playing it and are topping with the decks. And the deck is still really, really good. Um, but like I said, I really don't know if any of those will be hit on the deck. Odd Eyes cards, Performer Pal, or Draco cards will be hit on the uh, the ban list. Mad pure Magic Spectres, I don't think they'll be, uh, like, no one really plays just pure Magic Spectres or Magic Spectres combined with something else where it still uses the Magic Spectre engine or another engine to get the Magic Spectres out there faster. I, like, I don't see that. Um, you see, like, Kieran getting splashed into other decks or in Pendulum decks. You see uh, other just random Magic Spectre cards that get splashed into decks. Uh, like Kieran, I know the raccoon gets splashed in sometimes, uh, and I think the toad, I've seen someone splash into a deck, um, which was really, like, bizarre to me, um, but yeah, so it's, it's definitely a, like, a maybe what if type of thing, um, but I really feel that, uh, you, on a personal, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak from two different points, now that I've got all, like, the basis background of what I'm talking about, uh, two points, of what I think. Two points. The first point is a personal standpoint, which me personally, uh, I think any, I think if you enjoy the deck, if you enjoy playing the deck, just play it. If you find a deck that you enjoy or that you want to try out or anything like that, I say go for it. I say play what you want to play. Um, 
just because it just makes the game more fun. Even if you are playing competitive, yes, sometimes you have to make the competitive decisions of like, okay, even though this is very boring and the deck is really redundant, if you want to play competitive and like serious competitive, then you have to like go for the big uh, competitive plays and the big competitive deck decisions, which, like I said, can be very redundant and make the deck really boring to play. Um, that's why I normally have like four to five decks built at a time because I have my, my competitive decks and I have my for fun decks that like are still playable at competitive events, but more, but it's, uh, they're not as good as the competitive deck could be. Um, and that's because, you know, I'm a competitive player, uh, and I've been, I'm a definitely a, uh, what is it? <laughs> I'm an old player. I've been playing basically since the first pack was released. I was in first grade. Yes. First grade when the pack or when Yu-Gi-Oh first came out, well, not, well, not first came out. Um, when the first pack came to America, I was in first grade. Now think about that. That is fucking old. I remember getting my first pack for Christmas. I was like, Oh my God. But so yes, I'm a very old player. I've been playing for such a long time. I've been around for such a long time. Um, so yeah, that's why. Like, always gotta have those for fun decks. Always gotta have the uh, the I the deck could be better, but I like playing it this way. Um, but I also have my very competitive decks, like my Quants, my uh, Adai's Magicians, which I'm still working on making them super competitive. I mean, I have a competitive build for them, um, but I have I know of a way better build, which. I will hope to soon order the rest of the cards. It's just a matter of money and stuff like that. But that's nor here or there. That's not what the videos I talk about. But from a competitive standpoint, definitely say whatever's topping. If PK is still top or PK Fire is still topping or topping, topping, then play it. Play the PK Fire competitive topping deck. It's what it is kind of like what you have to do if you want to play competitive you have to make the competitive decision now if you keep up with you know cards that are coming out odd eyes and performer power are getting a lot more support to make odd eyes a um a deck of its own an archetype of its own you can say oh i have an odd eyes deck and damn near every card is going to have the word odd eyes in the deck or in the card so you have to make those like i said you have to make those the decisions and keep up with stuff and if Odd Eyes, if it shows like that Odd Eyes is becoming a topping deck, like if it's topping on Dev Pro or uh, for people that are still playing YGO Pro that still have it from before, then you know the takedown. Um, if it's still topping and still winning duels because of the new cards that are on there, then yes, be prepared to build a deck, build the stuff to play it. Um, now, when it comes to Blue Eyes decks, because he did mention Blue Eyes. Um, Blue Eyes is becoming a thing. Blue Eyes Max. That is a thing. That is a scary thing. That deck is deadly. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go see Linthios' channel. He has a Chaos Max deck profile, or a deck. Yeah, I think he has a deck profile as well as showing off the deck and what it can do and how it can OTK hardcore. Prepare for it. Be ready to build the deck when it comes out, or when the cards to play the deck come out. Um. You just have to keep up with it and know what you're doing. You can play the game smart or you can play it for fun. Um, I do a little bit of both. I play smart. I look out for those deals. I, you know, I keep up with stuff and I know what to play, what to build if I'm for the competitive events that I go to and also for the competitive things that I want to do with my cards. Plus, I also have the for fun decks and the for fun cards. And another big part of the thing is that... Uh, it is definitely a money game. I know it's sad to say the meta right now isn't so much a money game. If you want to play competitive money or competitive, like serious competitive, it's not that much of a money game right now, uh, which sucks. And it, it it sucks, but it also has its pluses because that means anybody could basically play competitive right now, which is amazing, which I'm so happy about. But at the same time, it sucks because then anybody can play meta. And you're going to see tons of meta everywhere. You could, you could be a 10-year-old kid. You can just go buy three Monarch structure decks. Boom, you're playing meta. Instantly, you're playing meta. Um, same with Cosmos. All you, it really doesn't take much to get everything 
for Cosmos except for Tin Cans, Dark Ladies, Dark Destroyers, uh, Cosmojos. Everything is dirt cheap to play. So, like I said, right now, Yu-Gi-Oh! meta is very cheap to buy in. Um, if you're going to play competitive, uh, you just have to keep up with everything. Um, but that's from a competitive standpoint. Uh, from a personal standpoint, me personally, play what you want to play. Like if you're if you're not playing competitive, if you're playing for fun, play what you want. Find what decks make you happy. If it just so happens to be meta, you're playing meta. Go play competitive. Go play competitively for fun. Um, that's what got me into it. I played for fun. Then I found decks that just so happened to be meta and I could afford at the time. Uh, that's before I had a job and I had money to actually put out into the game. Um, but I just would happen to find decks that were affordable for me that were meta. Uh, so like I said, all you have to do if you, according to Mr. J, that's what I call it, Mr. J, this is my, a more in-depth response to your comment. Um, unless you, you know, unless you read the comment and you haven't seen the video, which I did urge him to come watch this video. Um, like I said. From a personal standpoint, play what you want to play. Play for fun. If you enjoy PK Fire, if you think Odd Eyes Magician or Odd Eyes Performer Pal, anything like that looks fun to you, play it. Try it out. I mean, the worst you can do, buy the stuff, and then you don't end up not liking it, trade it off. Or hold on to it till it becomes uh, pricey and stuff that everybody wants. Then you could easily just trade it off. Um, but from the competitive standpoint, play what will win. That is literally the best way to put it play what will win um that's really all that's you know that's all that's there's not a lot of news right now um and the question i'm going to pose for the just let me come plays news uh question will be what decks or <laughs> excuse me um what decks do you play for fun like what decks do you have right now that you play for fun if it's meta say it i'm not gonna care um, if it's uh, for a fun deck that everyone's going to be like, oh, that deck's dead, that deck, deck's... I don't care. I still have my, uh... What is it? I'll grab a deck right now. I have Fire Kings and Luna Lights that, that I have for fun decks. And they're, they're fun. They're good and they're fun. So, like I said, post in the comments for the question. Uh, post in the comments if you have anything to say about YGO Pro... And Dueling Network, post in the comments if you have anything to say about the comment and um, what decks, you know, what you think about playing decks from a competitive standpoint, personal standpoint, a third party standpoint that you believe as well. And also answer the question, what decks do you play for fun? Anything. Just, I will not judge. Um, I'll comment even if, it, if I think it's an amazing deck or a for fun deck. I'll even comment to say, awesome, good for you, man. Um, or girl. Uh... But yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, all the links to, to the article and to the video with the comment um, are, will be in the description below. Uh, all the links to social media will be in the link description below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my other videos. Thank you, and have a wonderful, beautiful day thing or whatever. And just let me complain. <laughs>